Hello, and welcome back to Quarks and Quarter Notes. Today, Tyler and I will be talking about art. This week's episode is a little bit more visual, so if you're not watching on YouTube, I'd recommend looking at the works of art we're discussing as we're discussing them. If you enjoy listening to the show and would like to show your support, you can like, subscribe, or leave us some feedback. So Tyler, why should we appreciate art? <laughs> that's that's an interesting question because I I don't feel as if I have a choice. <laughs> you're, you're you're condemned to appreciate art. Something like that. When we saw some of those works at the uh, at any of the various places we went to, I was constantly astonished at how astonished I was at the painting. <laughs> So art is a very broad word, and we always like to define things narrowly. So typically, I guess the main categories of art are literature, visual arts, decorative arts, and performing arts. I think when people talk about appreciating art, they're almost always on the visual arts. That's kind of what comes to mind, I think, most of the time. Would you agree? For me. I think of like paintings, drawings, sculptures, music to an extent. Yeah. And and those all fit into the, the realm of art. We'll be focusing, I think, on the visual art. Also, as a sort of reminder to everyone, Tyler's specialty is physics and mine is music. Neither of us are <laughs> artists, nor are we like art historians or anything. So we're going to be talking from our limited perspectives on what we think about these and what we know about these. And we won't be using necessarily the, the perfect terminology that artists would like, so apologies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I'd like to go ahead and talk about is the probably the most famous one we, we took a look at, which is Starry Night. So give me your first impressions on it. Well, whenever we went to the Museum of Modern Art, I did not know this painting was in there. <laughs> and so when we got into the room, I was just like, what is that like? Is that it? Is that the painting? And it was. I remember being surprised at how bright and like vibrant the colors were. And also, when you get closer to it, the texture of the paint right. was more obvious and apparent. That's that's something that is really hard to convey in a picture, I found, is, is the actual texture of the work itself. Right, it comes off the canvas. It's not just, like, flat like you see on your computer screen. It's, yeah. Yeah, it, well, it's an interesting thing when you talk about art, even modern art. The artist considers what medium the artwork is going to be. So if people are going to be looking on a phone, you're going to be looking at making the art in a certain dimensions and in certain ways so that when people look at it on their phone, it was good. But when Van Gogh was painting... The methods people typically use to look at his work were not available at all. So just just their eyes, right? <laughs> That's all you had, <laughs> unless somebody else tried to paint the work to show somebody else or draw it or something like that. You just wouldn't see it. Yeah, if you really wanted to translate a work like this to be seen well on a computer screen, you'd kind of have to reinterpret it and sort of make it in a new way. So one thing about this style of painting is it is a bit more modern. It's called Impressionism, and, and really it's about capturing the essence of the subject rather than the detail. So before this, you typically have paintings trying to tell stories, kind of like we talked about with classical music. How classical music can tell this abstract story. That's kind of how painting was for a very long time. And then the Impressionists came along. And they were like, well, what if we... It's almost like kind of trying to make a movie or something out of a painting. We're, we're trying to not tell a narrative story, but we're trying to show you what is going on, if that makes sense. It seems like they're trying to... They're trying to paint a dream, mm. right? Yeah. It's... It's that weird, I don't know how to describe well, it. The it's movement like is kind of in there too. It's, instead yeah. of just like a, a perfect picture of the nighttime sky, you're kind of seeing the stars move around and shine and glimmer, and you're trying to capture that in one frame, and that's sort of what this whirliness is going on. <laughs> also, 
for what it's worth, I, I looked a bit into the astronomy of it. And that brightest star to the right of the tree mm -hmm. is actually Venus, most likely. <laughs> right. I was, <laughs> I was actually um, looking at... So MoMA on YouTube has a series of How I See Art or... The Museum of Modern Art. How, right. The Museum of Modern Art. They have a, a YouTube series called How I See Art, and they have famous people come and describe their interpretations or what they see. Yeah. And they had a... Oh, what is her name? They had a physicist, uh, an astrophysicist on. Oh, nice. They presented her to Starry Night, and she immediately goes, is that Venus? <laughs> <laughs> and they turn to her, and she's like, and they're like, well, that should be your area of expertise. And she's like, I think it is. That's it is. funny. I, I did note that as well. So it's it's interesting that you point that out. But it's very gorgeous. The, the village is pretty. I love the light in the village itself contrasting against the sky. It's very cool, and, and it definitely... Especially seeing it in person, you, you get the sort of the sense that this is like a moving nighttime sky. It's it's not just a picture. One of the other big impressionists we got to see there that's pretty similar is was Monet. You have this painting uh, Agapanthus, which I think is a species of the flowers here that he grew, and it's the same sort of thing. So it's, rather than making this very detailed and story driven work of art, the essence of what it is. So flowers moving around with the water behind it and, and grass waving in the wind in one sort of capture it's really neat it is really strange the images aren't static but they are yeah it's it's, it's sort of an interesting attempt at like like a gif or like a moving picture <laughs> of some kind with just painting very neat era. If you like that sort of thing, you can look at, at some of the other great impressionists. I'll definitely leave a... Did Monet do those... That one room we went into? Yeah, the really wide water lilies. Right. That one was strange. Because at first, when I walk in, I see two colors, mm -hmm. or three colors, more or less. And then you start like looking at the painting, and then like stuff starts appearing on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so strange. It's sort of the reverse of mosaic, where you like have these little details, and you see a picture, and you can zoom mm -hmm. in and look at the individual parts of it and see that it's not the bigger thing. But it's like the opposite. So you start with like this kind of hazy mess, and then you pay attention, and you can kind of pick out the elements that are going on. Right. But you can't look too hard, because then they like won't be there. It's very strange. Right, it, it, it's, it's sort of a bit of abstraction, but not complete abstraction. You're, you're taking the elements and abstracting them a little bit to where you can interpret a little bit, but there's still a very clear, rigid structure there. So th those were the first couple I picked out. I'd, I'd like to see these two <laughs> you picked out if you want to introduce <laughs> them. Well, this was my favorite piece of art from the entire trip. It's called Eye and the Village. By Mark Chagall. I've never heard Chagall, of him. So Chagall, maybe? Chagall. <laughs> I'm not positive. I have no idea. But I was so... It was so insane seeing this picture in person. I don't know how to describe it. It was just so colorful. And it drew my eye. It was so insane. It's so trippy. The goat is breathing out galaxies or something. He's like staring the dude in the eye. Yeah, the, the goat and the man are staring each other down. Yeah, and I don't know what to make of it. It's such a strange painting, and it was in person. It's like four foot by three foot. It's a large painting. Yeah. Well, it's sort of a dream. I don't know. You have all these images kind of laying around each other. So you have the the lady milking the cow. Is that is that? What that is? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. All the characters seem flat, or like mostly. But there's still somehow depth in the picture. It gives me some P Picasso vibes with like the really hard shapes. I wasn't able to grasp this just by looking at it, but according to the Museum of Modern Art site, it's a self-portrait narrative. <laughs> On the so they did have a little plaque thing next to the 
the pictures usually describing some of the history of it. Yeah. And this one said he was just remembering his hometown. Oh, uh, this was okay. So this is like his life, kind of in a picture, right? Like growing up, like in his past. Yeah, that's okay. that's what I said. So, so that could be him milking the cow, uh, like uh, that was one of his chores, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so even though it is a bit newer, it is a bit of that sort of older narrative type style. So it is telling a story here, with a more modern sort of style. Right. But you don't need to know any of that. Like, if you see this in person, you don't need to know any of that to just be blown away by just how, like, again, like, how colorful and just strange. It was just the strangest thing I didn't expect. That's for sure. Very interesting. And then the other one. Now, this is getting way into the abstract art. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm looking at. It looks like a flower. It's called <laughs> Dy- Dynamism of a Soccer Player. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the guy's name. Uh, it's it's Bo- Boccioni. Bo- Boccioni. Okay. Anyways, it's just like a mess of colors. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, to be honest. <laughs> I I mean it looks like a bunch of movement based on the title dynamism of a soccer player. I'm going to guess from the title it's something like uh representing movement. Whenever I was there and I saw this picture I, there was like a sense of like awe that I remember feeling. It was just like there's not a picture here. They're not trying to like a landscape or something of that sort. But it was obviously intentional and really colorful and just, I don't, language is failing me right now. Yeah. But it, it just that sense of awe was definitely there. Well, you know, now that I stare at it for a little, I, I've stared at it for a minute now, I, I kind of make out the leg in the middle. Do you see that? No. In the very center, <laughs> you can see the... The foot and the leg going up. As it gets farther from the middle, it's like dematerializing almost. How he goes from one color to the next is so... It's so smooth. Yeah, so, so here's the, the picture that you took. And you can see immediately that just adding a bit of the lighting to the room and giving a bit of perspective on its size already enhances the difference between just that. And I don't know if you've ever taken a picture of anything you know that a picture isn't going to no no angle no lighting you're not going to be able to get a perfect picture of that you're going to lose something and and the same thing applies here so if you can imagine going from the flat picture to this and then going from this to real life it, it is quite a enamoring picture <laughs> work of art it's crazy and it's quite large too right those those were always my surprise how big the paintings were. I always expected them to be uh, slightly bigger than a piece of paper or something, but some of them were like really big, bigger than, like taller than I was. Right. Well, well. Speaking of large, so the next one I wanted to hit was Washington crossing the Delaware, which we got to see at the Met, and my goodness, it is huge. <laughs> the painting is enormous. I intentionally, when I took a picture of it, I intentionally got a picture with somebody standing kind of off to the side. Yeah. That way, when I showed people, I could be like, you know, those pictures they show you in textbooks. Well, like this, this is actually what it is, like with a person next to it. Yeah. Like George Washington is as large as a person. So this is a more classical style where you get a whole story in an image. There's a whole lot going on. The first thing I notice is Washington, how heroic he looks. The sky is like brighter behind him. It's an interesting technique to highlight him. It's sort of like in movies how they'll angle the lights in a certain way to bring attention to one thing. But you can see. Well, I mean, there's several different ways in which they draw your attention. Um the guy in the green shirt for instance if you follow the lines of his eyes it brings you straight to him and then like the lines of the flag like at the top of the pole if you go down it kind of brings you straight to the middle of george washington again and same with the 
the the oars on the left side they all kind of draw straight to like the front of them right so i just took an art class last semester and one thing that i did take away from it is to try and look for lines in art and see where the artist is trying to draw your attention obviously they won't always do that especially for like paintings we just looked at which are just the impressionist and the, and the, yeah the yeah. cubism sort of stuff yeah but like in this sort of stuff lines are really important oh yeah lighting i love the big bright aura behind him right exactly like bringing the dawn well it looks very that looks very cool behind the the lighting behind the flag it's as if like the flag's being like lifted up and then it's like leaving that streak of like light behind it. it's so incredible yeah you have all these people with their own little details you got the farmers with the hats in the back one of them has a bandage on his head <laughs> each little person you can start asking stories about them you, you get this big diversity of, of people on the boat and it, it feels very American. <laughs> very American, that's this, for sure. This p image is just everything about America. That's good. <laughs> I didn't expect to be like as surprised as I was seeing a lot of the paintings. Or not just paintings, just art in general. Yeah, and, and you don't have to do any like complex interpretive games to really appreciate it. No on the uh the soccer player one you know like we don't know what's going on <laughs> but the colors and the texture and the shadows and the shape it's just it does something to the brain <laughs> that's for sure and i think that's all you really have to do to appreciate art you just have you just look at art you like you don't even have to play any game you can play interpretive games and that can be a lot of fun too it definitely made art make more sense to me. I think that's true. Yeah, everyone should take some time to go look at some art in person. Like, just actually go out to a local museum or something and just, just look at it. Because you, you might be very surprised what the difference is between just looking at pictures on your phone and online. That said, there are really great works of art you can look at on your computer and on your phone and typically they're designed for that it's kind of a common theme i think where things work best on the platform that they were made on any closing thoughts about art art appreciation or, or anything like that mm, i definitely appreciate art more <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to this slightly shorter episode. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up and we will see you soon.